Hi there and welcome to my tutorial today. This is the third installment of my After Effects tutorials. I'm making this one a little bit earlier than usual because my hard drive kind of broke physically. I plugged it in too many times and removed it too many times so my leads broke. So I'll be put behind a little bit on that so I had time to do a tutorial. So today we're going to work a bit more on the creativity parts and see what we can do rather than just the technicals. We'll include both. So I'm just going to go ahead and include a new composition here. 720p the usual as last time. Click OK. OK, I got an empty composition. We're going to work a little bit in 3D and more of how I work. It's going to be a little bit more efficient than usual. So if you need to pause and recollect anything I've said too fast, then feel free to do so. There's no rush. I'm going to go ahead and create a null object here. Camera. I'm going to parent the camera to a null object. I don't need the camera right now. So I'm just going to turn on one of these switches is around somewhere here. Shy right here. Okay, shy. I'm going to shy that layer away. We'll never need it again. Make my workspace cleaner. No, transform. Layer new solid 500 by 500 square pixels fill I'm just gonna control D and duplicate this several times I got three copies make this maybe green and then this one orangey color will do make these all 3D I'm just gonna go back and move these a little bit into 3D space Gonna position these three rotations. Move a little bit forward in time, and maybe we can zoom out a little bit with position. Okay, so now we got a little zoom in 3D space, nothing interesting yet. Gonna highlight these, go to graph editor. I'm gonna select endpoint, make that easy ease out. Oh, that's an ease in. I want that to ease out. There we go. Let's make that easy ease. Okay, I'm just gonna make this slow at the end. Then I'm gonna select this side. Make that ease in. Okay, so now we have I'm starting really fast and moving out slow, so I'm just going to ram preview that. Smooth, it's pretty smooth so far, I like it. Let's add a little bit more flair to it, move the rotation in front, and then I'll just slightly rotate it a little bit. Now that's very linear, not quite what I want yet, so I'm just going to do the same thing here. Okay, should do it. Let's see what happens. I like that. Three squares, interesting. Okay. And then I want it to move again. So let's move forward and 3D space again. Move back a little bit. Now this is just uh, another tutorial that I saw from One End Studio, but it was in complete Russian, so even if you saw it, you probably wouldn't understand. I'm just recreating it, sort of, and we'll add a, different, a few different more elements to it to make it more interesting and appealing, and you can make this into a motion graphic if you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this solid layer a few more times. I'm going to bring it on 3D space with the Z tool, and maybe we'll make this one blue. This one we can make purple. Uh, 
in this one. We create another bluish color. We'll bring this out a little bit. Okay. So if I expand this null to see where I am, it's going to go into the purple and behind it. Now this thing here, not very appealing. I'm going to find the purple, hit T for opacity. Move the 100 in front, make it zero here, so when it, so it fades in nicer rather than just go right through it. Now if it appears as if we're dissolving through the material, then we're going to the next again. So I'm going to go here, and edit this. It's the exact same. I like it. So let's try and see if we can rem preview this. See how nice it looks. Not quite what I want yet. Why don't I take this and move it in front a little bit more, purple and blue. So now I can move this up here. Same with this and the blue layer. There we go, now it should work. I'm just going to RAM preview this, zoom out, and then out again, okay. Not quite strong yet, so I'm just going to move this a little bit more, and maybe we'll add another rotation down here. Oh, wrong way, that looks awkward. I'm going to go into the negatives. Boom, boom, okay. Let's RAM preview that. One, two, and that's pretty smooth so far. I'm liking it. And we'll just do another zoom out. Into one nice big feature. So I'm just gonna put this in front now. This, however, I want to be a nicer looking shape. So, so, we'll add something interesting to this. I'm going to go to the Q on my keyboard, make this a rounded edged object. Looks a little bit nicer. We can put some logo in here maybe. I'm going to take layer, new text, motion graphics. Gonna turn that to white. I'll just resize this so I can fit this in here. Okay. I'm gonna take the transformation of this and paste it onto my motion graphics text so I can bring it out. I'm going to keep on pulling it out until it's just over it. I'm going to take the rotate. I'm going to rotate it so that it's in line. I'm going to use this tool to move the anchor point right in the center of it. I'm just going to scale the text down for this motion graphics text. It's a little bit large still. Okay. What the anchor tool does, by the way, is the anchor point is wh where everything rotates around. So if I had the anchor point right here on a corner, this is where this whole blue thing would ro rotate around. This is the point of rotation. So let's just have a look. Boom, boom, boom. So this needs to be blurred in just as the previous layers were below. So I'm going to move this a little bit in front and just take the opacity down. Maybe we'll move these keyframes in a little bit for a nicer effect. Okay. I'm gonna close these and open up my null layer again to see what I've done. And I'm gonna RAM preview this. One, two, three. It's pretty nice looking so far, even without motion blur. Let's see what happens when we add motion blur. 
just going to highlight all these, turn on motion blur, and then set the master mo motion blur switch on, and I'm going to ram preview this again. Okay, and that looks pretty nice so far, I think. One, two, three. I think that's got a pretty nice smoothness to it. And we can use this for multiple applications, of course. I'm going to make a background now. Black's a little bit dull. Solid. White. Oh, it's not quite what I wanted. I'm just going to delete this. I want this to be the composition size. New, solid. Make comp size. Okay. Put it below everything. I'm going to go and type in the effect ramp. I'm going to create my own background. Ramp. Radial ramp. And drag the center line here. And just drag the other one to cr make it bigger. And perhaps I'm going to change the white color to something nicer and blue. Maybe I'll make the outside darker. And the inside, I will make. brighter. There we go. So, if we re-preview this, it's looking pretty nice so far. Okay, now we got a simple motion graphics thing. This title's a little, little bit brands a little bit bland still. We can add some more flair to it, so I'm gonna change this to level up since that's what we're doing here. Level up 2014. I'm going to drag the spacing of these letters out since I don't want to really resize every every time. Looks pretty nice now. Level up 2014. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this blue layer. I'm going to scale it up a little bit, the one below it, so I have a background. Change that to white. You don't need it to be too big. We can use roughen edges, actually. Roughen edges. Put it onto the layer below that, and it will create an edge based on your mask path, and you can also adjust how it looks. So here, this one's not very good looking yet. I'm just going to play with it a little bit more. Scale, I'll make this spiky. Complexion, you can play with that, you can even keyframe it. It's not quite what I want yet, but I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll lower the mask path. If you go to math expansion, mask ex expansion, and you put it into the negative region, not for that one, sorry, the one below it, you can actually lower from the boundaries of the mask itself, even though the mask is still the same size. That way you can have complete control of the size of the mask if you made an error. We'll go in a little bit, and then we'll just scale this whole layer again. Hit S for scale, and scale it up. And now we got something really cool looking here. Maybe I'll scale it up a little bit more. Okay. And I will change the fill type maybe to a light blue. Now these coming effects I'm putting in, you might not necessarily have them. They're just plugins that you can download. I'm just going to add them to add some more interesting effects to this. Film glow. Film glow. That doesn't look good. Glow edges. Glow. Okay, look for glow edges. Here we go. Sapphire glow edges. It's an interesting effect. I like it. Not quite what we want here. I'm going to put this above fill. Maybe that'll change it. Yep. Still not quite what I want, so I'm just going to remove that and put that on instead, level up text. Maybe that'll make a nicer effect. 
There we go. That's a little bit bright. I'm going to change the glow brightness down to 1. Much better looking. Still lacks a little bit of a flare that we want, maybe. I'm going to add possibly a colored glow for this. Uh, now it looks a little bit bland. We'll keep that at, <coughs> with the white glow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this blue layer, duplicate it again, and we'll create a little shine out of it. You can have more than one mask on an image, of course. I'm going to change this to Q shape to change the shape of the mask. I'm just going to drag this down here as, to, as if to make the circle halfway. I'm going to drag the boundaries out, like so. And then I'm just going to change the fill color to a darker blue. I'm going to change the order of these masks. Okay. Maybe I'll turn this one off. Let's see what we get. There we go. Now we have a little bit of more of a shine figure, but it's not quite ready yet. So maybe I'll change the blending mode to something like color dodge. Okay, that looks better. So now it has a little bit of a shine to it. It looks more professional, I think. It's more interesting. Let's ramp preview this now and see what it looks like. Now, as you can see, the background there, the border isn't moving, but we can actually make it move. So let's tr go and do that now after I preview this. One, two, three. Okay, you only need it. You only need to start keyframing it as soon as it starts animating. So I'm just going to hit the keyframe for evolution here, move a little bit forward in time, maybe around a five, and change the evolution up a little bit like this and drag it around a little bit. Now it's moving for quite a while. I can ramp preview this again. And it looks a lot more interesting now, I believe. As you can see, it's moving a little bit. It's pretty smooth depending on how far away you make the keyframes for them and how much evolution you do. And then we're just going to ramp preview this again. One, two, three. It looks pretty interesting, I think. For an unorganized motion graphics anyways, this is looking pretty smooth. Okay. Next, I'm going to keep on moving in 3D space. Now, you have to keep in mind that the further you move in 3D space, the less effective the camera gets. So the farther you move out, it takes more values to keep on zooming out. So it's good to pre-compose a major camera sometimes. Oops, I forgot to unshy the camera layer in here. We'll just include that too in the pre-composition. Okay, layer, pre-compose. And I'll turn around back shy. Layer, new camera. We'll keep on working 3D space. Layer, new null object. Parent the camera to the null. Make the pre-composition 3D as well as a null object. And then just change the camera to shy. This is where it stops moving here, so I can just move a marker here, and that's what we're conti that's what we'll, we'll continue off with the null object position. The three rotations, and then we'll just move back again. Now I think I can create another something else cool here for this object. New solid white 3D make this underneath the pre-comp and we'll use the same technique that they used in the tutorial for 1N Studio Venetian blinds this is just a cool quick effect they used I like it and transition completed and we'll just do that and that's quite an interesting look I think we can kill that down a little bit Okay. 
looks pretty cool. I'm going to keyframe these, make them how I want it. Easy ease. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Move that to the side so it slows down and starts off fast, and then just easy ease that down. Okay. So now I'm just going to ram preview this again. And I'm thinking that looks pretty interesting so far. And we can keep on moving outward. One, two, three, four. I can move this a little bit. That was a little bit fast for that one. Okay. One, two, three, four. And this, I don't like this back, this black background. I'm just gonna make a new solid white again. We can create another background. I'm going to turn this background a nicer color, I believe, than the last. I like radial ramp. Move this to the center as before. Then just drag this value out. We'll make the inside maybe a reddish color so it can contrast with the blue and the outside a black color. Uh, red doesn't quite work with blue, I don't think. Uh, a color that works with blue would be... Well, we'll just play around actually and see how it works. Yellow, perhaps? Nope. Yellow looks really gross with blue. Turns into a greenish color when it complements it. You don't want to work with blue forever. I guess we'll work with similar tones to in, in our hue here. So, work with a little bit of purple. I like that. Make it a little bit brighter. That's pretty good. I'm going to change this white solid. Maybe to color dodge? No, doesn't change anything. Overlay. Okay, that looks pretty cool. So now it has reflective properties of the color with behind it, and that's a really cool transition to have, I think. Okay, I'm gonna rename this to camera two. I didn't even rename the first, but that's fine. And I'm gonna create a rotation keyframe here so I can start another rotation keyframe or it'll start rotating from the very beginning. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit more. Maybe like this. Zoom. I'm just going to keyframe this. That's not quite the shape I wanted. Nope. Maybe that'll work. I'm just going to keyframe that. Okay. Make another logo. Maybe I'll add some text here. I'm going to type. Tutorial 3. Move this forward in 3D space. Rotate it so that it fits. We rotate it to 24 degrees. So we'll just rotate this Z position to 24 and that will make it perfectly in line. I don't like how it just overlaps like that. So I'm just going to make some a black solid layer that I'll use to put underneath it, a palette. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool again. I'm just going to drag this down halfway approximately. That's pretty good, I think. Make that 3D. And put the camera to the top again. The black solid layer I'm going to drag out. Actually, why don't I just take the transform properties of this text paste on the black solid. Although it's down here now, I'll just drag it over. Resize. So 
zoom in a little bit. And now we got a nice looking tutorial three here. Okay, I want these to fade again, so I'm gonna hit T, keyframe. We'll see when it goes into it. That way we can there we go, right about here. So I'll set everything here to zero. And this little space should allow it for a nice fade. Okay. I believe that should do it. Let's ram preview this in the beginning. One, two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, five. Very smooth. I like that so far. You can keep on moving outward as far as you want. This don't forget to keep on pre-composing if you make a lot of camera spaces in the Z space so that you can keep on moving efficiently without having to drag the numbers very far. Uh, we can still add more flare to, flare to this other than camera though because after a while if there aren't enough elements it's going to get boring. So tutorial 3 here and maybe we'll add some typography effects. So I'll just go to see if I have any cool text effects in here. We can have a start right around here. So wherever you place the effect that your cursor is on, your scrubber in time, that's that's where the animation will start. So I'm going to go through text. Maybe mechanical. No, oh, nothing cool here. Scale. Wiggly scale wipe. So let's see how that looks. Tutorial 3. Okay. It's not bad. Looks a little bit silly, but it's not a big deal. It is just motion graphics after all. We'll make that shorter so it doesn't last as long. I'm just going to expand this. Go to text. Oops. Keep that at red. Animator. Range selector. I'm going to drag this back in here so that it ends quicker. Okay. I'm just going to make this easy ease, so it's a little bit smoother. That'll make much of a difference, but it's nice to add on text. Nope, that's a little bit choppy still. We're going to go control Z, control Z, and we're going to remove this effect completely since it doesn't end on quite what I want. It just abruptly stops. I'm going to go up maybe to expressions, frame number, inchworm, text bounced. Maybe text bounce will give a better effect. No text bouncing here. That one is a keyframeable effect, so we're not going to use that. Animate in. Wipe into center. Okay, that works. I think that the timing is good for this one too. So we'll just see how this one goes. I like that. It's a good effect. Okay, so I'm just going to unshy the camera layer. I'm going to highlight everything and pre-compose that again. Shift, layer, pre-compose. Shy again, layer, new camera. Layer, new null object. I'm going to parent the camera to the null. 3D, 3D, motion blur. Actually, I'll turn off motion blur for now because when we move in 3D space with motion blur, it's actually a little bit harder to align properly because there's motion blur on the edges. So when it stops moving here, approximately, I'll add this here and we can keep moving again. Move a little bit back in space to where before it stopped moving so I can keep it moving smoothly. I'm just going to zoom out again. This time, maybe I'll add a cool effect to this composition by turning to a sphere. BBC sphere transition. Okay. I'm going to keep him the wrap percentage percentage to zero here. And I'm just going to move forward in space as it wraps. Now, as you can see, the edges here at the top aren't very nice. I don't really like that. We're just going to work on covering those up. I'm just going to go to Repetile. 
Let's try going up. No, that won't work. Let me put it before sphere transition. There we go. Up a little bit. Maybe down a little bit. Looks a little bit more realistic, I think. Looks a little bit better. A little bit bigger, but it covers the edges now. Not completely. You can't have a perfect circle on this. And maybe for spin, I'll have this spin a little bit. Transition it over here a little bit. And change the spin. Maybe we can have a little rotate as well. Zero. So it zooms out and spins a little bit. I quite like that. We can remove the reptile. I think it's doing more harm than good in this case. Okay. Uh, we can go down to the timeline now. Going to remake this smooth, so I'll click on this. Change it so that it's slower at the, at the end and make the beginning go down like that with the easy ease. Going to keyframe this part and RAM preview it and see what it looks like. It's not bad. Looks a little bit awkward, but we don't have much to work with here. Don't have any plugins on here or many materials to work with. That's fine. I'm still gonna keyframe the sphere effect though, so that it's smoother. I want the spin and rotate to go the same way as my camera does. So maybe I'll do that. Easy ease. Okay, that's okay now. Oh, maybe I'll easy ease this as well. Okay. And the wrap percentage as well. Easy ease. Okay. And maybe I will just move this camera, these keyframes with the camera a little bit back in time so it keeps it moving, it kind of stops there. And I'll move these keyframes back in time a little bit as well. Okay, and we'll just RAM preview this. I don't like the way it's spinning after that motion. I think what I'll do is I'll make it spin a different way. Let's go to negative 200 instead. So it spins in the opposite direction. It could be my rotate. I think it is the rotate. No, it is. I can change this to negative 174 instead of positive. It should spin in the opposite direction now. Yep, yeah, that's fine. It's aesthetically better than the other one because it's spun in the opposite direction. This one looks more natural. Okay, maybe I can add some motion blur to that spinning object if it allows me to. Pretty sure there's an option around here somewhere. Faces light, motion blur. I don't see it, but there might be one. It's not a big deal, I can just set motion blur on the original layer anyways. There is motion blur on it as you zoom out because it's with the 3D and that automatically detects it as motion, so that's fine. Zoom me out again to a ball. And maybe what I'll do now is have a cool watery effect with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a blue solid layer. Put that underneath. As you can see, the, the ball has a, a little sh drop shadow underneath. That's a pretty nice effect. We're going to go ahead and add a ripple to this. PBC ripple is fine, I think. If not, we'll use something else. I'm going to add ramp, again, to make a cool background. I'm going to turn off ripple for now. Put ripple underneath and ramp. Whatever's at the top, 
go, it, it goes in order of succession for it to, it to display effects. That's why it's important for the order of effects that you'd make. I'm going to expand this. Maybe move this to center a little bit more. Make the center a blue watery color and the outside a darker watery color. Okay. I'm going to turn on ripple now. And I'm just going to make the center point of it right here. Okay. That's a nice cool effect, I think. Although, we can make it more aesthetic than this, I think. So I'm just going to add this into... I'm going to scale that up to make it fit the whole composition, even though it's still the same 3D space. But as you can see right here, it's blending with it a little bit. That's not what I want. I'm going to push it back in 3D space, actually. So I'm going to move forward in time. Move that backward. Then rescale it. So now it should not blend with the ball as it's going in. Instead, it should be way back there. So as you can see here, there's already a ripple before it's completely fallen. So I don't want a ripple there. I'm going to go and keyframe height, radius, and speed. Possibly fall off. I'm going to expand this for the keyframes that I just created. And I'm going to move these forward in time because there's nothing here yet until it's fallen completely. So right here we can say it's fallen completely. Before this it hasn't fallen at all. So I'm just going to change this to zero, zero, and there's no ripples, which is what we want. Okay. Although something's not quite working here. I think Okay, let me just undo that. Something's not working with my ripple. Okay. Let me change down the speed, the height of it, actually. We won't change height, we'll just change the radius of this. And it goes up, it gets bigger. There we go. You don't, you don't need to change the height, so we'll just uncheck that as a keyframe. It goes out, we can actually make the radius a lot bigger, so that it covers the whole thing. And then we'll just change the height of this, so it's a weaker ripple. Width as well. Not width will change to make it bigger. Height can be a little bit bigger. But I don't want it to be quite that strong. So possibly I'll change the height again. Fall off, we're not going to change. I just turned that off. And over here, I'm going to make this weaker by changing the radius back to zero. So let's keyframe that and see how it looks. And RAM preview it. Not bad. It's a little bit sudden though. So I'll just move this here so it looks like it only works on contact. So it works right away. It might be a bit strong though. Yep, it's a little bit strong. So I'll move this keyframe in front a little bit. So I, as to I can make a lighter radius point, I think. So now we have four keyframes in total, one with light, and center it stronger, then it fades back down again. A little bit weird looking still. I'm going to move this in. I really don't like how white that is. I might be able to change that. Maybe if I turn down the height. No, if you turn off the height, that makes it even darker. So I'll keep it the wave height down. Chaos, light level. Here we are. Light level controls how bright it is, so we just turn that down the whole time. We don't need it very bright. It's just a light ripple. And we're going to keep on moving in 3D space again right after this stops moving. So right here. We'll just make a marker here and drag it over. 
going to pre-compose everything here. Okay. 3D, layer, new camera, layer, new, no object. 3D, new object, camera, parented. I can shy this now. No, transform position, the three rotations. Move this back a little bit. And we'll just keep on zooming until the last one. I think this should be enough for today. In terms of creativity, anyways. Uh, I'm going to make these smooth again. Okay, that's done. And I'm going to make a different type of background this time. Layer new solid. We can keep it purple. Pink, pur pink or purple is fine now. We've blended enough. Ramp. Radial ramp center. And drag this out to make it bigger. Black and go to pink. The outside can go to black. There we go. That doesn't look zoomed out enough, actually. I'm going to zoom that out a little bit more. We can actually make a really cool effect with this by combining fractal noise with the ramp. Okay, go down to changing blending mode to overlay. Now we got a cool fractal. Colorly fractal. fractal. And we got to add some different types of noise here. You can choose whatever you want. I like turbulent smooth usually. Turbulent smooth is okay. Basic. Some other cool ones depending on the application you want. I'm just going to choose one I like for this. Maybe rocky. Cloudy. Cloudy is fine. A little bit bright and contrasting. I don't really like that. Subscale. Subscale looks nice I think. We'll keep with subscale. I'm just going to go ahead back here and the moment it starts moving out I'm going to evolve the fractal so that it keeps moving. Just spin it around a few times. And you got a dynamic fractal now. And we'll just make another layer to make a border for this again. Solid. White. 3D. Underneath. And just scale that out. We'll add a different effect here. Maybe we can add some pixel poly. That might work. And I'll just, uh... Actually, we'll, we won't use pixel poly in this one. It doesn't display as well. Let's go down and see if we have anything else cool. Stylize. Mosaic. Mosaic sometimes works. Not in this case, I guess. Motion tile, find edges, emboss, scatter. Scatter and maybe mosaic together might work. There used to be an effect where I could scatter everything in different directions like a grid. I just don't remember what it is, so we're just going to search it for it quickly here. Simulation. Card dance, that could be it actually. Okay, I'm just going to make the X position multiplier offset. Rows and columns. It doesn't look like it's going to work for this application here either. Maybe we'll use some pixel poly. No, that's going to be way behind it. And go to stylize. We'll just add a simple emboss here, I guess. It's not a big deal. We're just making a smaller, creatively leveled border. It doesn't have to be too detailed. I'm going to change this to color dodge. Oh, it's a little bit too contrasting. Classic dodge, same thing. 
linear dodge looks a little bit nicer. Uh, maybe we can add a glow to this now. Glow aura. I like that. Glow edges. Okay. Zooms in, zooms out. I don't quite know why it gets brighter like this. Maybe I'll move this back a little bit in 3D space. Yeah, that's why. Okay. I'm going to put down the null and change the rotation a little bit for some more flare. Now I can actually make this 3D as well. Move that back in 3D space. I'm going to just disrepetile everything so that it stretches out without losing any quality. Right, left. Actually, you could just technically increase the, rep the bounds of it by scaling it. I don't always recommend it since it loses some quality, like so, but Repetile does the work too. This still looks nice, the quality's not too bad, it's not pixelated or anything. I guess the rendering of it, of native After Effects, understands what, what happens when you scale it. So that should finish it off. I'm just going to RAM preview this now. There's a little complication here, it seems. I think it is the last layer. So if I go back here, anything that I had on a different mode, we'll need to shorten these up for only when we need them. Here it's still bright. That means there's something else in here that had a different mode that we didn't want. It's possible that the border I had from last time wasn't working too nicely, so it's not in this layer, it's in this layer. Blending modes are fine. But if I go in, it's not as bright. So there's something in this layer that doesn't quite like. Ah, it's a sphere transition. There's a little shine to it. So if I go and turn the light to it off. Light. Maybe I can diffuse it so that it fades in rather than have it throughout the whole thing, which looks kind of weird, I think. What does diffuse light do? That makes... Okay, that does it. So I'm going to keyframe diffuse light and move a little back in time and just change that to zero. So now we won't have a random thing there as well as we don't need on the blue side we have a little bit of a on the left side we have a little bit of a blue cut there. I don't really want that. So I'm just going to remove BBC sphere transition from the whole thing in general until we get to here. Maybe move that a little bit back in space. I'm just gonna, since I can't get rid of the complete color lighting, I'm just gonna opacity these two compositions compositions together. They're the exact same thing. What it's, it's gonna do is it's gonna create a little nice blur here. Well, I can see some banding happening already. I don't like that. Maybe I can remove it with some a better high bit rate thing. No, that's not working at all either. So I'm just gonna try to find another way to remove this without cutting it. So if I go here, keep opacity 100. 
go down to effect light specular light zero that looks normal now I think yep although I don't like this cut off here at all I still don't know what that exactly is um, so if I move a little bit back in time when you can't see it I'll just cut it and remove the previous one with BBC trans sphere transition okay it doesn't have it here it has a little bit of it, of it here I guess I can't really be helped There we go. That's nice. It's a little bit of a jump here, I don't know why. Let's move this all the way back to the beginning. One, two, three. Okay, that's fine. So we're just gonna ramp preview this again. Go back into the main composition and RAM preview. Okay, this looks nice so far, I think. And we'll just play this back now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This last one can be worked on a little bit. It stops here. I can move this a little bit forward. These keyframes, I'll make it start a little bit earlier. And let's make these smooth as well. Okay. Gonna ram preview this again. Okay, and let's preview this now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pretty smooth now. And I think that covers a little bit of creativity things and how to create cool objects in After Effects for some beginning tips. And that should be it for today's tutorial. Thank you for watching.